Winston Peters, you've had quite a week. Um, the SFO releases findings on the New Zealand First Foundation and you say that you've been exonerated. So I can't understand why you're still crying foul about it. Well, I had to go to court to get them to tell us that we had been exonerated. They were going to put out a statement uh, sub judice as to who they were charging. Mm. So everybody was implicated at that point in time. And anybody with any sense of natural justice knows that's not right. And more importantly, Jamie Lee Ross and the people who are being charged with the National Party never had their names given until they were in the court. Now there's a massive difference, and I just want there well, be, the, I want there to be... These people's names have been suppressed. They're not given... They haven't been no, given no, no. Name. But you're saying that they should have been. That's the inference of your question. No, and no all I'm, I'm saying... asking for, All I'm asking for is the same law for my party as every other party. I just wonder whether you're preparing this as an excuse in case you don't get back into power, given the current poll. Well, see, now you're back on the polls. Now, look, sure we're the underdog. And how many times in our career have we been the underdog? Time after time after time. Because you've made us that, just like now. But out there, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of forgotten New Zealanders just waiting to tell you who runs the country. They're the kings, they're the queens, and they'll make the change but, on election day. Sure. I mean, I know you don't like talking about polls, but one last point on that. The last <laughs> time in 2008, right, you were polling 3%, you returned 4%, and you were out. This time yes, it's 1% to 2%. Guess you might pick up a little bit, but, but you know, should history repeat itself? I'm glad you've said that. New Zealand I history is compulsory so now. Winston you're Pitts. here tonight, because you've raised the uh, stigma of 2008. Remember what the allegation was back then? <clears throat> Laid by the, La the ACT Party against me with the Serious Sport Office? I was utterly exonerated, but it was too late. Just like Hillary Clinton and the Comey allegations against her. So all I'm asking my New Zealand people to do is to look at what's fair and right here and not have one law applied to one party. Right. There are okay. four investigations going on at the moment with the SFO. Yeah, but yours, yours was one of the earlier ones, and so it's just oh, a timeline no, that's coming through. No, no, the, the mayoralty in Auckland and Wellington and Christchurch were earlier. John knows that. He's a lawyer and so am I. The second thing is the National Party, uh, the Labour Party's case goes back to 2017. So please don't tell me for the first time ever, the SFO puts a timeline on a hearing, on an investigation, which they have never done before, and it's against their policy. But I'm not here to waste my time okay. with them. All right. Well, no, let, well I, let's. No, I, agree, I, I agree with what he just said. The timeline is very clear. Uh, a whole range of donations, and I don't want to get um, specific about race, but huge dollars from Chinese people went into the Labour Party coffers. This is all under investigation. And national. Uh, but, in 20, but in 2017, <laughs> and 2017. They're both not here to defend themselves, that much. No, no, I, I, no, no, look, I, I, I think he's been terrible oh. uh, on a number so of you're, things. So but no, no, but, <laughs> but, you've got to be, but, but you've got to be fair. You know, we've got to be, we're Kiwis, we've got to be a bit fair. Okay, well, Simon, I'm glad, there, glad you guys are mates. Simon, there is, there is a solution for this, and if other political parties <laughs> would support the Green Members Bill and the Green Drive to clean up political donation to reform our donation laws and get big money out of politics, that would also uh, make sure that we are agreed and transparent to people where our political Have influence is coming from. Have you guys got a trust? Um, I'm not sure because no, I'm no. kept at long. Do you have a trust? I'm, I'm, I'm kept. Oh, I don't Fair personally yeah. have one. No. Well, let's ask David Sewell. Do you have a trust? Well, no, is no, there no. an Act Party Act, Trust? The Act doesn't. We just. Do so you have uh, a foundation? We, no, we ask people for donations and we report them and record them just like the law says and just like everyone else should do. Can I just say, in Marama's defence, the one thing our two parties have in common, we're the only ones in Parliament that are not being investigated <laughs> by the Serious <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> That's okay. a bit true. You look on the electoral it's committee. A bit true. You look at the electoral commission website. How many big dollar donations have come to the Greens lately? Gee, that must be embarrassing. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be transparent and honest and open about them. Okay. That's all and, that we're asking. And, and, right. and at least you That's declare that good on you. All right. Uh, well, David, so can I ask you? I mean, you uh, you might have a few mates in Parliament this time around. Are you confident that you can run a caucus? I don't think you were probably expected to have so many possible inputs. Well, it's not other people's expectations that matter, but you know, not to be braggartly, but the, the parliamentary service, Go on. <laughs> they, actually, they actually asked me for, to write some advice for incoming MPs on managing their team because they thought I was one of the better employers in Parliament. So, you know, I just, just thought I'd get that out there. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, if you look at Acts, actually, it's not just the caucus, it's 
it's okay. the board, it's look, the membership, it's the staff. Look, right, so I've okay, been yeah. leading an organisation for quite some time. He's, he's a recipient of the house burning down. That's the, that's the national house, right? And so Judith's job, <laughs> Judith's job is to save the furniture, right? <laughs> what she what she doesn't understand, so what she doesn't understand is Dave is out the back yeah. taking a lot of it out. <laughs> so, 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 so that's the truth of it. Yeah. That's the truth but, but, of it. JT, JT, if all, that, hang if all that's hang true, on. why is no one voting for you? Oh, hang on, yes, Winston. <laughs> when it's all over and they've lost, then they'll be all sharing the furniture on the back bench and doing, doing nothing at all for the country. Every promise they will have made between the National Party and ACT will be forlorn and wasted because they're not going to make it. Well, OK, let's talk some policy then. Uh, OK, let's talk COVID, the, the pressing issue. Don, John Tamahiri, do you want to wait for a vaccine before the borders reopen? No, I think um, we've done an extraordinary job as a nation and uh, I, I think now we've geared up all our systemics, OK? Right, so you're for, happy now? No, no, well, no, no I'm, not happy. Saying... On, I'm not happy. What, what I want us to do is target... Uh, those uh, populations that are vulnerable, okay, our elders, uh, don't matter what colour, brace mm. or breed. Uh, secondly, I want us to target um, uh, Māori and Pacific Island people whose respiratory issues are legendary. Right. And thirdly, uh, those with pre-morbidities or, or problems. If you continue uh, waiting for a vaccine heading down the track, we've got a few problems. So what we want to do is concentrate uh, all our resources, uh, not on lockdowns and clean off the economy, but rather on actually a better management system. And we've got okay. a great health system. I think our people also, the discipline of New Zealanders, has been extraordinary, right? Marama Davidson, uh, the Greens, I would say, have been somewhat quieter on COVID. So why is that? Is that because you're just towing the Labour Party line? It was really important to support a public health first approach. That was the best thing for our whānau in our communities and our businesses. So that was really clear. But we do have a responsibility through our COVID response to make sure with all this money that we're pouring into communities mm. that it's going to set us up for good green infrastructure, okay. for we'll, climate we'll, we'll, resilience, yeah. Yeah. environmental protection and, we'll and about, everyone having we'll enough. We'll talk about COVID economies soon. But I I just guess it's, it's the policy at the border, right, that is trying to keep COVID out. And I haven't seen any Green Party policy on that. Well, again, we've been supporting a public health okay. first approach. What I hear, going back to the question about vaccines, what I hear is that even if and when we get a vaccine, it may not be the sort of solve all that people are hoping. So again, we'd need to make sure our contact tracing systems sure. are in place, but our health system um, is, an, is enough to cope as well. All right. Uh, keeping people in isolation is not your favourite thing, uh, is it? Unless they're in an Airbnb, David Seymour. That seems to be your policy, isn't it? You, so oh, when they come, when the attorneys come in, you're happy for them to be in an Airbnb. Is that correct? Well, I think you're being a bit mischievous. Um, I've Never. Used, <laughs> I've, I've, I've used one example of one of the things that Taiwan has done. Um, but our wider point is that only one country actually gets this thing. They had 12 times fewer deaths per head of population than we did with no lockdowns. And they did that by having really smart rules of the game, by having an epidemic command centre that's multidisciplinary and public and private sector, by using better technology and weighting their approach to risk and always striving mm. to be better and be better prepared. Okay. And so those are the sorts of principles uh, that we've brought to the table. So, so do it like Taiwan, OK. I think, I, think, right. I think we could do a lot worse than being more like Taiwan. Well, just finally, Winston Peters, I mean, you've mentioned that you wanted to bring the military in earlier, and you've yes. come out and said that uh, quite a while afterwards. But hasn't the government now proven that its, its role has been effective? It's, it's sort of defeated two ways of COVID. Oh, look, this country has done tremendously well, mm. uh, particularly given this country and what we thought we weren't, and we proved that we were that capable of cooperating. But the cohesion and the cooperation is a very, very delicate thing. If people don't go on believing we're doing the right thing, it could so easily collapse it, and this would be a disaster. Look, Taiwan, in a sense, is under 500 cases and seven deaths. But they did have a serious uh, uh, implementation of the most strict rules. They got an app which we should have had, and we've been offered one and we didn't take it up. Right. An app that, that seriously works. The Morgan app, when it's backed up by a guy called Taylor, that's a serious genius when it comes to that sort of technology, really needed to be looked at far more seriously. Okay. So we should have had the military from word to go. And also, we had to be at our maritime and our aviation centres right on alert all the time. You say, your original question was, well, what if we don't get a vaccine? Well, the fact is we're praying for a vaccine every darn day. Yeah. But we may not, like AIDS, for so example, we have to be after four, yep. uh, four decades, get one. But what we've got to do 
It's, no, look, this is important. You've got to tighten up our system real tight. We can have uh, bubbles between other countries, but the protocols have got to be right. well, totally we might come to, come capable to of being up. enforced. Okay. All right, just before we go, one quick fire question really quickly to you all. If you could poach an MP from another party here tonight, <laughs> who would you like to have in your own caucus? Marama. Nanaya Mahuta. David Seymour. You mean poach as in like poached egg or, or, get, them, or get them onto your site? Because the answer could be... Well, the choice is yours, really, isn't it? Although somewhat dark. <laughs> oh, look, I, I'm very focused on bringing more ACT MPs right. in, so I haven't thought about that. John oh, Tamahiri, anybody else? Oh, of the so, oh, no, of the present people. Yeah, you don't, don't have to choose these guys, but uh, of their parties. No, no, well, none. None? OK, <laughs> with St Peter's. Anybody out there you uh, like? Look, it might be sound strange, but there are many MPs that I seriously do admire. But if you ask, would ask me about one. one, this guy was fired with a lie. He got his job back. I always believed that he was an honest guy. His name was David Parker. Mm. OK. Thanks very much. That's all we've got time for the first break. If I can know, coming up, more from our potential power brokers. Stay with us. And welcome back to our New Sub Nations Power Brokers special with these potential power brokers here. Let's talk about economic recovery post COVID. New Zealand's facing its worst recession in 100 years, so what is the plan? David, you want to cut taxes, but you also want to slash government spending. Won't that make worse for those who have been hit hard? No, I don't think it will because a lot of the government spending that we have is stuff that's been lacquered on election after election as each party tried to buy off a different voting group. And I'll just give you one example. You know, if you're 18 in New Zealand and go to a high decile school, you're one of the luckiest humans to live since we climbed down from the trees. And the Labor government's priority is to give those people even more subsidy through fees-free tertiary. Nearly half a billion a year. Can we really afford that okay, for the but, next decade? But you want to cut yeah. the best start payment, the winter energy payment, mm. and you want benefit levels to go back to pre-COVID levels. That's right. Back to the level that the Labor Party was happy with for the first two years. If it's so bad, why didn't they raise it in their first two budgets? But don't, there are, are there more people needing help now, aren't The they? alternative, well, they, there may be more people, but do they need more help? The alternative yeah, is to borrow so much money that we are not going to balance a budget for 15 years. Kids currently learning to walk 
will get a driver's license before they see the New Zealand government balance a budget. Now, if everybody else has to reduce their spending, shouldn't the government live within the same means as everybody uh, so else? That is actually okay. problem. Okay, Marama, Marama Davidson, do you think that this is going to affect, affect the poor, affect the, affect the vulnerable? I mean, you yep. want to boost benefits. You, yes, your, we do. your argument is totally opposite. Yeah. Slashing our public services has always um, been terrible for our communities, for our environment and especially for our climate. The way to revive our communities is to make sure that there is a guaranteed minimum income. The people with the lowest incomes will spend that money immediately in their neighbourhoods and that is a really important way that we can revive our communities. We also have in our top priority plans a range of sustainable jobs that are going to take us into the future, whether that is insulating homes, solar sure. panels and batteries, transport, um, agriculture, farming, so then, energy. But you're talking about your green restoration jobs. Is that enough of an economic powerhouse to get the country going again? Well, also, we've been very, very clear that those with more than enough can chip in and help us to prevent the big massive debt that our grandchildren are going so to have to So you're talking about your wealth tax, bear. right? wealth and income tax. It's very, very clear. It is indefensible that so many people are missing out on a decent life yeah. while there are many, many people But once you have to go back to the drawing board on that because Labor has said, we don't want to do that. Again, the more votes and the more support that we can get. Wait, just, I'm nearly finished. I'm nearly finished, Simon. Just, can't, uh, just come down. The, the more... Simon's over here. David, Sorry. my apologies. The, the more <laughs> votes... We're quite, quite, quite uh, distinct Look, on that. Again, any party can say what they need to okay. on the campaign trail. Yeah. yeah. Just we'll, very we'll yeah. Very the, the way people on. get a better life is to work, save and invest. If these guys get in and raise taxes, you're going to see less of that and all of us be poorer. Look, okay. Not true. All right. Here's the problem we've got with Mr Seymour, right? Greed is good. And I understand that at one level. The problem is, is that people like Mr Seymour led the neoliberal economic revolution. Well, well in fairness, that, I, that, I, I, I no, kept the on, garden hang, at the hang, time. No, no, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but enough of your playing games. <laughs> okay, so this is real, this is a real conversation. Okay, so, yeah, so, yeah. so don't take the mickey out of it. Okay, the well, real well, issue, well, the real issue, no, the real issue is when you've got people like this that come from entitlement and privilege and uh, can went escape to, taxes. Went to a decile one into the Whatever. No, no, so I'm talking about what's, your, what's your point, John? My point is, is that it is right that you take from the greedy and give to the needy. It's right that to it take. Is right, right. That it is right that we recalibrate this country's moral okay. compass in regard to the way in which we treat the poor in this country. Okay, well, so, okay, let's rather than, okay. No, no, his, his policies are going to send our people. You know how he's going to manage us? Build more prisons. How <laughs> dumb is that? I don't, I don't know if that's his policy. That's completely untrue. Yes, but yeah, yeah, Winston Peters, would you like to jump in on this? <laughs> well, you tell these two guys, this is not the American elections. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> the second thing is, you can't have welfare without wealth. But the problem we've had, and long before COVID arrived, was the gap between the rich and the poor was growing larger and larger for the last 35 years of a massively failed neoliberal experiment. First of all, Roger Nomics and then Ruth Nomics, I know a bit about this mm. and I can realise just what went wrong. And the point is, we can only get ourselves employment if we've got business successful. And if you want to talk about proper taxation policies, it is to help employers to get back, to export, to, uh, to alternatively have products that we would not be importing because we're making them ourselves, growing them ourselves. Right. We can do a lot. One last thing. We are way off the mark of being where we were once. We were number three in the world in our lifetime and now we're, number, now we're in the middle and the, or the bottom of the OECD on most stats and all this, all this talk you hear tonight, we'll do this and this and this. Look, if you borrow on hope, we're going to go bust. If you want to starve your people to wealth, I've seen that before and it doesn't work. Let's, well, let's talk about how we generate some economic activity. John Tamahiri, I mean, I see in your policies that you want to wipe beneficiary debt and double benefits and raise the minimum wage to $25. But Labor said that those policies are going to bankrupt us. So how are you going to... Have you costed those? Yeah, yeah. well, everything that we've costed is costed within present budget lines. No, every, so, name, name, one, name, name one thing that my party has actually addressed that's not within a present budget line transference. Okay, right. whether it's COVID, whether okay. it's COVID recovery, $20 billion, sure. or whether it's within existing budget. Well, can, can I make the point then that if you are talking about current budgets, you're talking about you want 25%, whānau first, and most of 25% yeah. of all the jobs, all, all the resources. That's just shifting, it's not creating. No, no, it's not. You see, here's your problem, okay. right? We've got 40,000 Māori between the ages, I'll give you an example, 14 to 20. 
not in employment, not in education, not in training. If you do not get them active as a progressive citizen, they've got nowhere else to go but organised crime. You then have to pay, and here's the number, two years of corrections, two years of corrections vote is more than all the money paid out in all treaty settlements. Now, who's dumb here? Now, who's crazy here? We cannot lock our way up out of this. We have to make our people positive, progressive citizens, and we're going to, we, we have to stop being embedded in welfareism. OK, sure. So what's the job creation plan? Well, see, here's all the money being pumped out. Here's our problem. No, no, there's hundreds of millions of dollars being pumped out into shovel-ready and all this nonsense, right? But the reality is, is that we're locked out of the opportunity to be connected to it. And that's our problem. We're embedded in the bottom end of town, in, in the land of our own ancestors, yep. and it's not acceptable. All right, let's, let's talk to David Seymour. How are you proposing? Is it just the tax cuts that you're going to create jobs with? Is that, is well, that the, it? Is that, well, the, like the, well the, tax, the tax cuts are important. So we would drop the middle income tax rate between 48 grand and 70 grand from 30 down to 17 and a half. And we would cut GST by five points to 10 mm. uh, for a year, which would circulate an extra 6 billion in the private economy. So that's the start. But it's also our regulatory environment. You know, too many people just say no to developing their own property because it takes longer to get consent under the area than to actually build it. We've got to change that. It's too hard to get foreign investment. We say if an investment comes from a friendly, democratic OECD country, then we should reduce the restrictions because we actually need capital. On the, on the flip side of this, in terms of you know, what you're proposing about uh, beneficiary levels and, and the like, you're proposing that if somebody uh, has a baby when they're on a benefit, you want to control their spending with an electronic card. That's so you're right. taking away choice there, and you're yes. the party of freedom That's right. of choice. Well, if it's choice to spend other people's money, then you've actually got to have some restrictions. Oh. And here's Is that the thing. appropriate? No, here's, here's the thing. Here's no. the thing. There no. should always no. be no. a benefit. No. You know, Nicole McKee, our number three candidate, her first husband <laughs> died. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Our fir her yeah. first husband died while she was a month away from having her first child. She went on the DPB. It was there for her, and it always should. But the fact that one in ten New Zealand children are born yeah. onto a benefit benefit is uh, unacceptable. Okay. Well, will it apply to the dads as well? If a dad, an absent dad is on a benefit, will it apply to them? Will you Absolutely. control their spending as well? Absol Absolutely well, it should. What do you think That's about it? so out of touch. That's yeah. completely out of touch. The first thing is we need to understand that people are doing their best with what they have. But we have kept benefits mm. so low and working wages for the lowest income earners so low mm. that this has created an entrenched generational poverty. Okay. When we support people who are doing their best, um, that actually is how to get people, give people more choice. When we support people to hold more income support while they choose to go into part-time employment, that is how we uh, right, support so people to make it. their All own right. decisions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Winston Peters, quickly. Now, can we have a short answer from some of these people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yes, I'm well, glad you asked you that. Glad you, oh, I'm glad you asked that because now, saying, now we're just going to go to the break. Now you're saying got... quickly, can I just say this here? Look, Lee Kuan Yew and the Singaporeans proved that you can have high wages if you've got very successful, profitable business. So right. business taxes are critical here. The idea that's one or the other is so wrong. If you want to be in the first world, you get high wages with great businesses. OK, let's do quick fire because you want some quick answers. Uh, first of all, I want to know a four-year term, yes or no, Winston Peters? Yes, on this, no, on this grounds. Look, let's not have a referendum without we all agree midterm that we're going for it's... four years and then we'll put it to the people. OK. No. No? OK. David Seymour, for you too? Yes, it's, it's too hard to get good policy done and hasn't this government uh, shown it? And Madam Davidson. <laughs> yeah, open to a, it might lead to better decisions, but it does need to be put back to the people uh, as put well. It, put it to the people. OK. And last quick fire, if there's a policy from another party you, you agree with, what would it be? David Seymour? Well, the last person from to these promote guys. end of life choice was actually Marion Street from so, okay. Labour, and we're happy to have right. taken that baton on. David Tamahiri, uh, John Tamahiri. Oh, no, apologies, David's my brother. Yeah. No, well, that's the kill the Maori bill he's talking about. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Well, I can look, 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 okay, hang on. Hang on. Look, are you just asking the question? No, no, the, re the reality is, is that there's nothing in his suite yep. that's any good for us. But I'll tell you what, we're closer akin to the Greens, 100%. Winston Peters? Yes, and be honest about it, not steal it, and say it's your own.
And lastly, Marama, is there... Did they actually give the policies? I, 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 really like, I really like what the Māori Party are saying about ruling against Māori and Pacific children, for example, to be expelled and suspended from education. I think okay. that's a proactive policy right. that needs to be put in place. We'll leave it there for the moment. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back after the break with more from our power brokers. Welcome back to New Sub Nation's Power Brokers Debate. Over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of heat cast over Oranga Tamariki taking and uplifting Māori babies. It's been a huge issue. So, Marama Davidson, the Māori Party wants a separate agency for Māori children apart from Oranga Tamariki. Do you support two systems? Uh, what we support is funding, properly resourcing, properly empowering kaupapa Māori based approaches which are about making sure that every child is safe and thriving. And sure, that so is something that was called for right back from Puao Te Atatū, I think back in the 80s. So do you favour Oranga Tamariki doing it or someone oh, else? There's a, there's a lot of clean up that they have to do before Māori families or any families trust them. So, so, so again, we want to see more support for the Kaupapa Māori community driven organisations who know what needs to be done. So John Tamahiri, you want $600 million to get it off the ground right now, but how can we be sure that you would do a better job immediately? Because we're doing it right now. And uh, that's in the final water space. See, the problem you've got with um, an agency that uh, is not connected to us, not working with us, are there some babies that require uplifting? Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. But you don't arrive with the police and you don't cut the umbilical cord and rip the child away from the mother. Mm. You arrive with Sorry. our whanau and we say, no, we, we, we're taking this baby because this baby sure. belongs in our community. Right? No, no, no. Ricky says it's making, making steps. It's no, got no, you and I had this conversation before. And uh, actually, they're not. And uh, what I need to say to you is, is that uh, what we need to do is acknowledge that we're big enough and we are now capable enough and we have capacity to look after our own people. And right. I don't need an agency paid $700 million a year solely for the Māori clients to feast off our failure. 
What we need is agencies that fix the problem rather than manage it. And Oranga Tamariki, and you know it, I know it, everyone sitting here okay. knows it, has failed every, every audit and review possible. Winston Peters, do you favour a two-system approach? No, I don't. Why in not? The, in the Māori world, uh, children should be a taonga or treasure. And the reality is that there's far too much poverty which we can deal to with sound policies and sound economic strategies. But in the end, in the Māori world, we know we need a, re a renaissance. We need a reawakening. This idea that you can brutalise your children and remain silent and then blame it on the state is just not right. And there are too many Māori out there mm. in the former world who understand precisely what I say. I've seen people who are born with poverty know what it tastes and smells and feels like, mm. but they've never resorted to that. But, but, we've, but, we've got to know, we've got a sheet home responsibility in a cultural sense. But you can make, separate Māori agency have all leads the, to better outcomes, have all the debates be like, Look, you can have all the debates in the media you like, but the only answer to this problem is an inward reaching and a renaissance and a change in the Māori world, I'm telling you. This guy's been the biggest handbrake on Māori renaissance, on Māori looking after Māori problems and not making it a Pākehā problem, uh, uh, out, of all politicians, out of all politicians, right? I'm here because I'm proud to be a Māori. Mm. I am, I'm not ashamed to be one. And I'm proud of my people because we have solutions. Do we have problems? Yes, we do. Give us a break. Mm. Let us fix okay, them. So well, let me just tell you this. I was born into a family of 11 children. I know what I'm talking about. My family began life in a tent. So when somebody says that, I've been a handbrake. No, I've been a handbrake against blaming everybody else. The people that came across the Pacific to get here were a magnificent people. They were in the Second World War, the, the battalion, in the Maori Women's Welfare League and the wardens. Please don't tell me we're not capable of doing this as well. All right, uh, David Seymour, I mean, uh, I've heard you say that you're proud of your Maori heritage. What would you do in this situation? Now, I remembered sitting with Anne Tolley in Cabinet Committee, helping her argue to form Oranga Tamariki, separate from the MSD, and I really thought that after, I think it was 17 previous restructures, this one would do it. And has it? What those, no, it hasn't. And what that tells you is that nobody has an answer, despite the bluster and rhetoric. We do need to do better, and ACT is bringing people into Parliament who know okay, about it right. and are highly committed to fixing it. That's not true that nobody has an answer. That is not true. The enduring solutions are found at the front line where these challenges okay. are, which include Māori women who have long been saying that our traditional support structures, being sure, being sure, making sure that we are supporting that whānau focused kaupapa Māori support structures and, and you have said is that. where yeah. the okay. solutions yeah. so are. So I'm going to move on now to another really big issue, a big issue for everybody, it's climate change. Uh, David Seymour, you want to scrap the Zero Carbon Act, you want to end the ban on oil and gas exploration. Are you taking climate change seriously? No. Absolutely, because no. the ban on oil and gas exploration just means when we run out of current reserves, we start importing more Indonesian coal with higher emissions. It's got to be the stupidest policy that this government has, and that's really saying something. The <laughs> next thing I'd say is that we actually yeah. need to scrap the Zero Carbon yeah. Act because it puts too much power in the hands of the Minister of Climate Change who can decide if a sector lives or dies. Oh, we should uh, never politicise the economy that way. What we should do is have an ETS and tie our carbon price to our top five trading partners so that New Zealand firms okay. do their bit but pay no more and are not disadvantaged in trading with the world. John Tamahiri. Look, look um, I, I get greed is good. See, the present, <laughs> the present status quo uh, cannot continue. Mm. And we've put hoe in the ground, I'm so talking for the Māori Party, to say, no, we must transition. And, and yeah, transition. It, but what are, you, what are you doing about it? What are, you, what are well, your policies? Well, 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 the Māori Party co-leader won a Court of Appeal judgment against marine mining mm. over in the Taranaki. Mm. We are doing that. Motunui decision, 1982. Okay. They destroyed oh, yeah. our claim. Hang on. They destroyed our claim one. Just, just in mining our own seabeds without our policy. consent. Policy. Yeah, well, the policy is we want... Our, want a, yeah, uh, no, no, all I can see is you want a billion dollars for solar panels or, or, and insulation on yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's, not, that's not a climate change policy, it's more of a health policy, isn't no, it? No, no, no. Firstly, you've got to uh, put the pole in the ground to say you, you guys that are destroying the environment and, the, and our economy shift to a new economy. And if you don't put the pole in the ground and say that, they will continue to mine it out to the end of the, end of the earth. OK, look, Winston Peters, you have been part of this government and yet you blocked the government's clean vehicle fee-based scheme. What do you have against electric cars? Well, you're not going to slide by that quickly. The National Party and the ACT Party went to Paris in 2015, signed up to the Paris Accord, yep. and we've been trying to fix it up ever since. Our international buyers of our product will determine this issue, mm. because if we don't comply, 
then we'll lose our market. The real issue is this, we can get to, to where we want to get to in 2020, where the Climate Change Commission has been put in place, yep. but when he talked about EVs, uh, uh, for, poor, for poor people, the cost would have been prohibitive. That's why we said So you are in favour of election and here's my point. Some, some and here's my point to the Greens is, when you had your conversation and discussion and negotiations with the Labour Party before the last election, it was for you to win then, not come along and try and change everybody else's policy after it. Marlama Davison, this policy, this issue should define the Green Party. But has James Shaw bowed to farmers who still aren't paying for emissions and aren't likely to 2025 and even then it's going to be a 95% discount? So just firstly, the Greens in government have put in place the strongest action for climate change in three decades. We, because of being in government, have stopped um, new offshore oil and gas exploration yep. and yes, we are finally bringing um, farming emissions into the ETS. Right. You are. But yes, is we it are. soon enough? I mean, it's like 2025 and they're going to pay 5%. And we've said that we will review that as well and check whether or not we've made enough progress. But we do need a just transition. We do need to make sure we are both supporting farmers to move to cleaner farming methods, mm. as well as putting limits on nitrates which and nitrogen, um, which we have already, and synthetic fertilisers, which we have also outlined in our farming plan. OK. Last, uh, we're just going to have some quick uh, fire questions here before we go to the break. And this time it's, uh, can you tell me, starting with you Winston Peters, what is the worst mistake you've made last term? This term? <laughs> this term? Well this term, this yeah. Term? It's still going, I know. Uh, yeah. Because of cabinet rules I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have, to, we'll have to have to get hold of that somehow. What about smoking outside at, no. at a non-smoking university? Uh, well, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know a real thing, here we've got governments, Labour and National, talking about smoke-free 2025. Then you're going to have a marijuana referendum coming up very shortly. But just to make sure it's not even true, the tax for tobacco and cigarettes have gone past $2 billion and are rising. And they've got no sincerity about it. We're going to stop them ripping off poor people. It'll be 20... 20 bucks a packet. 20 bucks right. a packet. Okay. So is that the and worst thing you've done? And it's my business if I want to have a fag outside. <laughs> not yours. You can have a fag outside. <laughs> You have to go outside, though. <laughs> John Tamahiri, what's the worst thing you've no, done no, in the last... Work. I know you're not, in, you're not in at the moment, but what's the, last, what's the worst thing you've done in the last sort of term? Oh, I, I forgot our wedding anniversary last week. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> From a political yeah, point of view? Well, 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 I've been on the couch for a while, but... Yeah, but you know, so, well, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, there you go. OK, uh, David Seymour, what's the worst thing you've done this term? Pass the doble. <laughs> I think maybe we can all agree on that one. Okay, Marlena yeah. Davidson, what's the worst thing that you've done? I watched Paso Doble. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If I can, uh, coming up on this uh, final part of our debate will be, uh, will be our final part of the debate, followed by analysis by our political panel. <laughs>
Pokemon on to our power brokers debate. This is our final section with the candidates. Let's talk housing. It, uh, the housing crisis dominated last election, seems to have fallen off into the back burner of this one. Winston Peters, house prices are still going up. We've got a shortage of 56,000. Is this a failure of the government that you've been part of? In part it is, and we've admitted it with respect to one program for which I wasn't responsible for. You know what it is, I'm not going to mention the person's Kiwi name. Kiwi Belt, everybody. Yeah, but if you talk about uh, the housing corporation, they've gone damn busters on building houses. Hey. Private housing has been the highest since 1974, but here's the point. We inherited a massive demand with, in, with infinitesimal supply and we've got to turn it around and we haven't done it so yet. Yeah, so it's a failure. Okay, so we're talking about affordable housing here, we're not talking about social housing. David, you want to cut red tape, but so far the free market has basically you know, ensured high prices. If you cut red tape even further, we're we just going to see more of that. I beg your pardon, which, which free market? You've got a government that regulates to the hilt how people can develop their land, a government that has a monopoly on infrastructure or controls the funding of it, mm. and a government that mandates that councils have to do building inspections, and they do it badly, just look at leaky buildings. There is no free market, and that's the problem. What we need to do is replace the Resource Management Act with an Urban Development Act based on the Productivity Commission's Better Urban Planning, start funding infrastructure properly by giving councils half the GST on new builds so they have money to build it and an incentive to give consent, and actually allow mm. private consenting of of new builds because at the moment the councils do it, they have no expertise in it, they're risk averse and they mean that we have so little innovation and so few new materials. Okay. New Zealand is over a barrel, it's too hard to build a All new right. house and people can't afford them. So you were just having a bit of a laugh there John, why is that? Oh because um, the elephant in the room is anyone owning two, three, four or five houses go oh. to a casino in this country that they never can lose on. There's no tax on it. And so the problem mm. we've got in pricing other Kiwis out of the market is the fact that we reward those that are already in it. Right. And but what, just what, stop. What hang on. Just stop. Just stop that. So, no, 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 no. There's, no, there's a number of uh, packages within the Māori policy. And you should read it. You should read so, it. Just so, read just not so just to finish up. Just to finish up, John Hammond. Yeah. So, so, so there's a whole range of issues that we've got going on here. Firstly, it's okay. affordability. So yeah. how, the, how, yeah, the hell, yeah, yeah. how the hell is, is uh, Māori, do you know the Māori average income from the 2018 census is $24,300? How the hell do we get on? So how do we make matter? the houses affordable? I mean, that is the key question. Well, Mara you make Davis it easier to build them. I mean, it's, yeah, okay, it's simple. Greens have been very clear that we need to prioritise public and community and iwi providers um, make sure that we commit to government spending enough to clear the waiting list in five years, right. which means that we have to prioritise public housing as well as empower community iwi housing providers to build a non-profit rental sector. It is not defensible at all. The way that things are currently going mm. are causing hardship for too many people and we have to change Just quickly, that. Winston Peters, you wanted to jump in on well, housing. Look, first of all, hey, radically, radically reform the resource management legislation which National passed in 991. The second thing you've got to do is have a huge investigation into pricing because it's 35% higher than Australia's. Okay. The, the, the last thing you've got to do is give the housing plan to a whole lot of practical people, not a bunch of bureaucrats in Wellington. All right, well, let's, let's move on to social housing, right? So, look, the, the, the waiting list is almost 20,000 households waiting yes, for a state house. Okay? So, Madam David, so this is close to your house, but you've promised 5,000 new social houses. That still leaves people out in the streets. Well, again, we will, uh, alongside clearing the waiting list in five years, so, you know, you clear being, able, years. being able to build 5,000... 5, 5,000 doesn't equal five years, does Well, it? alongside that, mm. alongside building 5,000 homes a year, um, we will, again, allow for community and iwi housing providers okay. to build non-profit right. rental so you've, sector you've homes mm -hmm. and a progressive home ownership scheme which we've already started, um, rent to own type model which was already started and will That's keep funneling housing. investment. Well no, it mm -hmm. all works, it all works to making sure that more people have got affordable, um, healthy, Okay, John Tamahiri, I'm going to enjoy there. John Tamahiri, you want 50% of all state housing for Māori. Well, we're 50% of the waiting list in the land well, of our ancestors. Now, hang on, that's point one. But let's so get what, back. So, what happens to the people that are already in. Let's get back to supply. What right? happens to the tenants? Let's get back to what happens to the tenants let's, that let's are already in state housing? See, the, if you problem, want 50 the, the problem we've got, the problem of we've got in social housing. Are you going to answer that? The problem we've got in social housing is simply this we're not, one, building enough, and mm. two, we've got a whole bunch of people in the country right now 
that have been given them in preference to Māori. And I, I, we, so what happens to the people that are already in the State House, if, if you want to have... Because you know, Māori are 37% of the state house we're, we're at the now, moment, out okay? Of 20, and so that's, out of you're going to have to kick people out. Out of the 20,000 families on waiting lists, 10,000 are Māori, right? In any electoral cycle, three years, one so, third of our people are kicked out of their tenancy. How can their babies educate themselves? How can they have a proper health service unless we sort social housing out? Mm. And Māori, I'm telling you right now, we're the tangata whenua, we're the okay. We've got a preference, and I want 50% of those houses to house 10,000 of my family. All right, let's move on to our last topic, which is Ihu Matau. So, look, we're waiting and waiting and waiting for a deal here. Winston Peters, you said we've halted a deal three times. Why? What did you say no to? Ihu Matau yeah. has already been part of a Treaty of Waitangi Settlement. No. It is the Tainui Settlement, and I was there when it happened. Now, please do not have the idea that you can bust open the settlement without the rest will be bust open as well. OK, John, And it's just me. wrong... Okay. It's wrong to not tell the people the true facts behind this matter. 18, right. 18, so, 1840, the treaty was signed. 1863, that land was stolen. 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 Confiscated. Yeah. By state... So what's the by, answer? By what's, what's the answer? Well, if, just give if, it back? If someone steals what something from you... Settlement? If something steals someone, something from you... You hand it back. So, Marama Davison, does that mean that this is going to, if you, if you give it back, it's going to open up all kinds of other treaty negotiations? No, there are lots of ways, lots of solutions to make sure that there is a peaceful resolution to this. I'm mm. really proud that we've got this young, new generation of Māori leaders who are demanding true terity sure, justice. So and so, that so is why the Greens were very clear and asked the Prime Minister to halt their mm. development, supporting the kaitiaki on the front line, and sit down at the table okay. to come up with a peaceful resolution. Well, so and that is, is happening. Uh, that is happening. That is, is happening. Yeah, but that it hasn't happened the, yet. The talks are happening. The building David, has David been halted. Seymour. Yay, David Seymour, what is the answer? Look, the answer now is extremely difficult. We need, no matter who our ancestors were, a system of the rule of law and property rights. That's the only way you get prosperous and solve the problems we're talking about tonight. But right now, because the Prime Minister decided in a dispute to side with the squatters and undermine legal property rights, mm -hmm. it's now extremely difficult to work through. It's possibly the most damaging thing in the long term that Jacinda Ardern has done. I think whoever wins this election is going to have to think very hard about how to get through it. All right. no, all they're right. not squatters. They're and not squatters. They're mana whenua. I do need to, to wrap this up. I'm sorry. We're going to wrap, <laughs> wrap this up. So finally, from all of you, I just want a quick a closing statement about why people should be voting for you. <laughs> Who are you pointing to? You want to go last to you. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Davidson. Uh, the Greens in government have done more for climate action than in three terms while addressing inequality and protecting our environment. But we must go further and faster, including in our response to COVID-19. Labour need the Greens so we make better decisions. Greens and government will make sure that we get stronger action for mm. climate change, ending inequality, protecting nature, thinking That's... of our mokopuna, party vote green. OK. David Seymour. No, the, the world has just changed and our country is going to have to change with it. Act's a party that stood on principle against every other party, but also worked with every other party to get legislation passed. And through this COVID period, we've offered constructive criticism when necessary. We've made helpful suggestions where possible. And that is the kind of contribution that we're going to need to get back to recovery, to get our way of life back, and do it as a reunited country. A party vote for ACT is for more ACT MPs making that contribution, because the only problem with ACT MPs is there aren't enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> John Tamahiri, your final statement. Oh, yeah, look, look I, I, I just want everyone to know that um, from here to eternity, we're not going anywhere, the tangata whenua. And uh, <clears throat> from here to eternity, we will seek justice and righteousness and fairness about uh, our rights to break out of the bottom end, structurally embedded in the bottom end of the land of our ancestors. And if that, if the truth of that <laughs> upsets, <time. laughs> if the truth of that upsets others, so be it. But it's our truth, okay. and we will speak it. Winston Peters, final statement, please. Look, three years of stable government through crisis after crisis has not been easy, but we did it. But the reality is that experience and common sense is important in government. You've got to be not on fading wheels. You've got to know what you're going to do next because you've got the experience. And the reality is, out there, there are hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders who need some insurance in this campaign. You don't 
take that pathway, you get risky, you get careless. You have a massive lurch to the left after this election and all for many New Zealanders will be lost. So buy some insurance, party vote New Zealand first. Okay. <laughs> And that is our final closing statement. Thank you very much. Mr. Peters, thank you very much. That's it for our candidates section of this Power Brokers uh, debate. Wilson Thanks. Peters, Marama Davidson, John Tamahiri, Davidson and Namihinui, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, after the break, how nice, did they perform? Nice, Tune in for our political panel. <laughs>
think, I guess so, but I, I think they've all shored up their bases um, in this debate, but I guess what we don't know is how many of them have been able to attract some of the undecided, which is really, when you're Marama Davidson, you're on a knife edge, really, in terms of getting back in, um, that's really important. You need yeah, to I know we've that. been calling them yeah. the, you know, the queen makers and mm -hmm. the power brokers, but you know, could we see the green, uh, Greens not be there? No, I think the Greens will be there. I think there are really three um, scenarios. The first scenario is the possibility of Labour going alone. By itself, yeah. Yeah, um, at an act, an act uh, national coalition. That's a possibility. Or a Green uh, Labour coalition. And I think those are the three machinations. Okay. And I also think that perhaps even if Labour was to govern alone, that they would want to think ahead and strategically have some sort of arrangement with the with the Greens. I, I sense also that there, there was quite a bit of chumminess amongst all three of them, which surprised me. There wasn't, you know, the, I guess they've all been around for a while, they know each other, but were you surprised by the chumminess? Was, did they not make enough points of difference between the three parties? Four oh, parties? Oh, four, yeah, four. Yeah, four parties, Cause, yeah. Because I'm just wondering there, were you forgetting that Winston Peters was on the stage? <laughs> Be, because in, uh, in all seriousness, um, Winston Peters doesn't always participate in the minor party debates. He doesn't see himself as a minor party. Mm. Okay, so he then obviously changed his mind and decided he wanted to be here he tonight. Did. I was fully expecting him to bring his A game and command the room. I didn't see that. I thought he was really quite subdued, and um, I found it interesting near the end where you saw quintessential Winston, where mm. he wanted to have the last word. So he gave the signal to you, Simon. Yeah, yeah, he did. You should yeah. go to the other three first. I'm having yeah. the last and, word. And I obeyed, yes, I yeah. know. <laughs> but, but except for that one commanding gesture yeah, yes. to you yeah. as the moderator, I felt he wasn't on form. Right. Mark Joyner, what did you think of Winston's performance? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think he always has a statesman-like um, demeanour and he always will and that's a, a product of how long he's been around but Lisa and I were talking about it almost looked like the younger Winston sitting there with David Seymour in terms of he does, he is the one bringing a lot of the new ideas and we always like these minor party debates because it is a really good contest of ideas and the major parties has become a bit of a contest of personalities so right. um, David Seymour is the one bringing the new ideas to the table and um, so I think... Do you think Winston Peters is, is doing enough? I mean, his political career is on the knife edge. Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, <clears throat> I've been to uh, many of uh, Winston's tangihana where people have said it's all over for Winston and he comes back again. And right. I ain't going to yeah. write him off no. uh, now, <laughs> now or, or, or in a couple of weeks' time. I think, I think it was quintessential Winston. He enjoyed it. He enjoyed the engagement with, uh, particularly with JT, you know, their, their foes, their old, old friends. And, and, and it was a sort of a relaxed, um, a relaxed Winston that we probably haven't seen enough of in terms of this campaign. What about policy? I mean, did, mm. the, did these guys reference their policies? Did they promote their policy or did they just um, have a chat along and, and oh, appeal no, to their I th basis? I, th I think JT references his policies uh, and, and also because he is a, because him and the work that the Waipareta Trust do in real terms, that not only was he able to talk about policy, but he was able to talk about how it works for him and how it works, works for the, the people that he, work, he works for okay. and on behalf of every single day. So he was able to put the policy in terms of context of how he can make what it about, work. What about the others, Les around? Well, I thought, I agree, John Tamahiri referenced policy mm. that you thought, oh, I'd like, might like to go and hear something more about that. When he talked about wanting an enduring Māori movement that bows to no Pākehā control mechanism, I wanted to ask, so could you go into coalition with one of these other parties and be in Parliament, or is that a Pākehā control mechanism? I wanted to know more. When he spoke passionately about you can't cut the umbilical cords of our children and mm. take them away from us, he was referencing his policy. You heard a little bit from Marama Davidson, as Marg said when she was talking about um, housing policy, what they want to achieve around social housing. David Seymour, he was the only one that seemed to have a plan B around COVID. We didn't hear much of it. This is their policy about risk assessing people who are coming into the country, not just having a one-size-fits-all. You don't yeah. all go into isolation for 14 days mm -hmm. if you're coming from a low-risk country. You can go into an Airbnb, as That's you right, see. yes. I think, I think that's a really worrying thing for not just this country but others. There is a, so much talk about the problem and no one really has the, the solutions coming up in terms of how we get out of it. Did we learn anything that we didn't know? Did, well, did, are you surprised by anything that came out to, tonight? Uh, well, I, I, I wasn't surprised, but th this is this is my pickup from tonight, Simon. Mm. Uh, Māori Party, the Greens, and New Zealand First are about equity of opportunity. They see the delivery mechanisms slightly differently, mm. and act and uh, with their 
only possible coalition partner are, are about auster, austerity, and I think that's what um, I got from today. Right. Okay. And just just wrapping up. Was there a funny moment? Oh, on? when Madame <laughs> Davidson um, yeah. burnt David Seymour on the face of Doble. Very good. Very good. All right. So we give the funniest moment to uh, Madame Davidson, and everybody disagrees about who won. Is that how we wrap the evening up? No winner. Just you said, you know, maybe most improved players or. or or and most lively performance. And the cont contest of ideas is the, the winner for me on the day. Winston's comment about the uh, this is not the American um, American <laughs> situation, it couldn't be more different from what happened. All right, we're going to wrap it up. That is uh, the analysis from our panel. Mark, join Elisa Owen and Shane Tepo. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. I hope you enjoyed tonight. And that wraps up our Power Brokers debate for this election. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Nami Hinui. We will see you again next weekend. Hey, Connor Mark. <laughs>